Hello, I'm Sam Stovall, Chief Equity Strategist of S&P Capital IQ. In this week's Sector Watch report, available on GetMarketScope.com, history supports a 10-year yield of from 3% to 4.2% when looking at gross domestic product or the consumer price index. From 1947 to the present, the yield on the 10-year note typically traded around one-half of 1% below nominal GDP. Standard & Poor's Economics, which operates independently of S&P Capital IQ, projects that the second quarter nominal GDP result will be revised higher to around 3.5%. This resulting figure should place the 10-year yield at around 3%. The historical relationship between CPI and the yield on the 10-year note tells us a more ominous story, however. Since 1947, the monthly spread between CPI and the yield on the 10-year note averaged 2.2%. Since the CPI reading showed a year-over-year gain of 2%, history says the yield on the 10-year note should be closer to 4.2%. Conclusion? Wall Street hates uncertainty, and right now, discerning the appropriate yield on the 10-year Treasury note is anything but certain. Also, a lot of money rides on the correct answer, as the difference between a 3% 10-year yield and a 4.2% yield represents 120 basis points of implied yield on investment and speculative-grade bonds, as well as conventional mortgages. Our view is that the yield on the 10-year note should be closer to the lower end of this range as we still see the U.S. economy facing headwinds that will likely keep it chugging along at a slower than normal pace, despite the apparent pickup in Eurozone growth. And even though the Fed has admitted that it will likely begin its tapering program later this year, we believe a December start date is still not out of the question. I'm Sam Stovall, and I'll talk with you again next week.